Hi, I'm Chad Skelton, and this is another video on how to use ChatGPT and the Notable plugin for data analysis. Um, if you do not know the basics of how to use uh, ChatGPT and the Notable plugin, uh, please look at my very first video, and I'll put a little uh, link at the top here. Uh, it explains the basics of how you set it up. Essentially, you need to have the paid version of ChatGPT at the moment, ChatGPT Plus, then you install the Notable Notebook plugin and you apply uh, for a free notable account and then you should be good to go. Um, but check out that video if you need some basics on how to get set up. Um, so one of the things that uh, I found kind of neat about um, ChatGPT and its ability to integrate uh, with notable notebooks is that it actually opens up um, a lot of tools that previously have not really been accessible to people like myself that don't really have uh, a really hardcore coding background. So, you know, through years of being a data journalist and teaching data analysis and data visualization, you know, I've been familiar with uh, some of the tools that um, programmers use like machine learning and fuzzy matching and natural language toolkits and all that kind of stuff. And it all sounded pretty cool and, and could be quite helpful for my data, but I didn't have the sort of confidence with Python to be able to access um, those tools and those libraries. Uh, and one of the things that I've been sort of playing around with uh, recently in ChatGPT is um, sort of seeing whether I can access some of those more powerful tools without uh, needing to code. And I, and I wanted to give you a, a kind of a neat example of that today where um, it, it actually allows you to use some of the machine learning um, capabilities in Python, uh, again, without needing to know how to code. Uh, and to illustrate this, I'm going to use uh, a data set that I've used in a lot of my um, teaching and training uh, and that I worked on uh, when I was doing a project at the Vancouver Sun on political donations in British Columbia. So this is a uh, data set on uh, all the uh, political contributors <clears throat> to political parties in BC over the past several years. Um, <clears throat> and what I've done here is I've summarized it by the biggest overall donors. And so we have a total list of... Oh, about 61,000 donors. And in the Elections BC dataset itself, uh, it actually classifies each of the donors. Um, and I've included the three biggest types of classifications here, which is uh, a union, uh, a corporation, or uh, an individual. Now, in this case, I, I know this information. I don't need um, a computer to classify this for me, but it occurred to me this would be a good way to sort of test out some of the machine learning uh, capabilities of uh, ChatGPT because I could then check it against um, the real answer. So, so what I did is, is out of this list of, as I say, about 60,000 individual donors, I took uh, 100 uh, union donors, 100 corporate donors, and 100 individual donors um, at random, and I put them into a document here called donors matched and then so that's a total of about uh, do, 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 300 um, total donors uh, classified and then I've got a, a list of all of the uh, donors in a big sort of unmatched document and, and again this is kind of an artificial uh, exercise but the idea here is to try to see you know, in, a, in a, a situation where they weren't classified and I had thousands and thousands and thousands of donors, you know, could I manually classify 100 corporate donors, 100 union donors, and 100 uh, individual donors and get the computer to do the rest and, and then see how good of a job it does because I can check it against uh, the real uh, answer. And I, and, I, and I know enough about machine learning to know that this is the kind of thing it can do well, but I wanted to see whether uh, we could do that in ChatGPT. So in my uh, notable notebook, uh, I have uh, uploaded these files, donors matched, donors unmatched, to my testing project. And then I'm just going to tell ChatGPT again, please set this project as my default project for notable. Okay, so uh, that was important um, because that's where the files are that I need um, Notable and ChatGPT to go find. Um, my experience has been once you set a default project, it'll actually be persistent throughout various um, chat sessions until you change it again, but I figure it's just good um, practice to fall into. So I'm going to now ask this, and again, I feel like it's helpful in thinking through what ChatGPT and Notable can do to sort of play dumb a little bit. So I know uh, I don't know very much about it, but I know a little bit about machine learning. I know it exists, um, but I want to pretend that I'm someone who doesn't know that it exists and, and see if ChatGPT can help me out. 
Okay, so I'm gonna ask a question like this. I'm gonna say, I've got some data on political donations in British Columbia, Canada. And I'm trying to classify the donors into one of three categories, union, corporation, or individual. I've manually matched 300 donations in a file called donorsmatched.csv. Can you help me classify the rest of the donations in donors unmatched CSV in the file? And let's see how it goes. Okay, so ChatGPT uh, gives me a plan, and, and I should say here, one thing I've noticed about uh, ChatGPT, and I'm sure some of you have too if you played around with it a little bit, is it's quite idiosyncratic. So a lot of these things that I show you guys in the videos, uh, I test it out first myself, and sometimes it goes one way and sometimes it goes a different way. So it doesn't always give me this kind of plan, even with kind of an exactly similar prompt. Sometimes it'll just launch right into the work itself. But in this case, it's saying, we're gonna load the data, we're gonna pre-process the data, we're gonna extract the features, we're gonna train a model, evaluate the model, classify the unmatched data, and review and iterate. If the results aren't satisfactory, we need to go back. Before we start, could you please upload the two CSV files, donor-match.csv and donors-unmatch.csv to your notable project? I'll say I've done that. Okay, and as in all these videos, I'll, I'll edit out the boring parts where uh, ChatGPT is thinking or working slowly, but a reminder that you can always sort of look at these little boxes here to get a sense of what requests ChatGPT is making to the notable API and what it's getting back in response. So it says both uh, files are present in the project. Let's create a new notebook. Um, let's load the data from the CSV files. It talks about there being an error because of the file path, fixes that, shows me um, the first few rows of the matched donors and the first few rows of the unmatched donors. So, so the matched donors includes a class name column, which indicates the class of the donor. The unmatched donors data does not have this column and our goal is to predict these classes. Before we proceed with the next steps, could you please provide more information about the columns in the data set, specifically what does each column represent and are there any other details that might be relevant for the classification task? So I'll say the column contributor name is the name of the contributor and the amount field is the total amount of money donated by that contributor. Okay, and it's coming up with uh, some possibilities of, of what they could do. So it says name analysis, we could potentially extract features from the names themselves. Uh, donation amount, we could look at the donation amount. External data, if there's additional data available that could be linked to the donors, donors that could be useful. So let's do some exploratory data analysis to better understand our data. Okay, so ChatGPT um, looks at the distribution of donation amounts, so sort of seeing whether some types of donors give more or less, but they say it's hard to make any definitive conclusions just from the plot. Uh, some example names, so these are corporate donations, individual unions, starts to make some initial conclusions. So from the example, it seems that the names of corporations often include LTD or INC, while the names of unions often include union or association. This could potentially be a useful feature for our classification model. Next, we'll need to pre-process our data and extract features. Um, one common approach is to use TF-IDF, which transforms the text into a numerical representation that can be used by our model. We'll also include the donation amount as a feature. Let's proceed with this pre-processing and feature extraction. And it just sort of stops here. And this sometimes happens in ChatGPT. So I'm just gonna say, please continue. Okay, so it says it successfully pre-processed the data. It includes the TF IDF values, the words again, I don't, I don't know what that means, but it seems to be a, a machine learning technique. Split the data into a training set and a test set. Uh, the training set is 241 samples. The test set is 61 samples. Uh, we'll next train a model on this data. It talks about trying a logistic regression. Uh, it says that model didn't perform very well. It gives some statistics. Uh, it's only predicting the union class and is not making any predictions for the corporation or individual classes. This is likely because our features aren't providing enough information for the model to distinguish between the classes. So it says it might be challenging to build a model that can accurately classify the donors. However, we could try a few things to improve the model, try a more complex model. Uh, a more complex model like a random forest or a gradient boosting machine might be able to capture more complex patterns in the data. Feature engineering, we could try to engineer more informative features from the data we have. Uh, features based on the length of the name, the presence of certain keywords, collect more data text classification technique. 
Since the main feature is the name of the contributor, we could explore more advanced text classification techniques, Let's include word embeddings. Would you like to proceed with any of these options or do you have any other ideas? <laughs> okay, so again, I don't know very much about machine learning and I'm trying to pretend that I know even less, um, but let's say, uh, let's try a more complex model. Okay, the first option they give us. Okay, so it says, uh, let's try that more complex model. We'll train this random forest model in our data. It says the random forest model performs significantly better than the logistic regression model. Gives me a bunch of stats, which I don't fully understand. Um, it says the model has high precision and recall for the corporation and union classes and reasonable precision and recall for the individual class. The overall accuracy of the model on the test set is 0 0.89. I'm guessing that's 89%. Given this performance, we could use this model to classify the unmatched donors. However, keep in mind, the model's performance might not be the same. Would you like to proceed with classifying the unmatched donors using this model? And I'll say yes. Okay, uh, it comes across an error because of some blanks, fixes it. We've successfully classified the unmatched donors using the random forest model. You can check the results in the notebook. Please note that the accuracy is dependent on the accuracy of the model, which is trained on a relatively small data set. Uh, if you wanna save this classified data, you can export it to a CSV file. Would you like to do that? Yes, please. It's always nice to be polite. Okay, and it says the classified data has been successfully exported to a CSV file named classified underscore donors dot CSV. You can download it from your project files in Notable. So I'm gonna go over to Notable. I'm gonna go to my project and there we have it, classified underscore donors dot CSV. I'll just download that to my computer and take a look. Okay, so because uh, this was a bit of an artificial exercise, um, I can actually check and see how good of a job ChatGPT did. So, so the actual uh, data that I got from uh, ChatGPT uh, is here, um, and it just has three columns. So it's got um, the contributor name, the amount, and the class name for all 60,000 uh, donors in my data set. Um, but I loaded that into a spreadsheet, and then I, I loaded in the correct uh, classification from the original data set and then just did a little V lookup so that for each donor I've got the predicted class according to the machine learning model that ChatGPT did and the correct class and we can see already some correct but some mistakes right um, and uh, if we look at the data in a pivot table we can actually see these are the correct classifications so for the true corporations of the 10,000 and change corporations. ChatGPT correctly identified about 9,000 of them as corporations, but incorrectly identified 1,800, which isn't great, as individuals and 95 as unions. Much better job at individuals. Um, almost all of the individuals were correctly identified as individuals and only a handful were not. Same thing with unions. Um, of the 469 unions in the data set, 460 were correctly identified as unions and nine were identified uh, as individuals. And if we look at that on a percentage basis, uh, got 83% of the corporations right, 98% of the unions right, 100% of the individuals right. That's obviously not quite true, <laughs> but uh, I actually, you have to get to, uh, I think two or three decimal places before you actually see the error. It's 99.957% uh, correct. Um, and in my playing around with these machine learning models uh, in, a, in a situation like this where there's sort of three classifications, it's just trying to decide one, what bucket to put it in, usually one bucket is worse than the others. And, it, and it's a bit idiosyncratic depending on how the model actually works. So, you know, almost by definition, it's being more conservative about identifying individuals, but that means that there's more individuals that end up in corporations if the model was tuned slightly differently. And I've seen the sort of the reverse happen, where some more corporations get identified as individuals. And then the corporation sort of success rate uh, is a bit better. And if we go to the pivot table, we can sort of start figuring out kind of why some of these mistakes were made. So, um, you know, like what um, individuals uh, did um, ChatGPT incorrectly identify as unions? If I double click on this right here, uh, it's actually interestingly um, a bunch of um, people that left money to um, political parties in their will. So, so instead of it just having someone's name, it was a state of something, a state of something, and that got uh, ChatGPT a bit confused and it thought for some reason those were unions. Uh, same thing for the corporations. A lot of those were identified improperly as individuals. If I double click on this and I can almost guess what this is going to be. Um, well, some of these are a bit, bit more surprising, but a lot of them are that the, the corporations have people's names in them, right? So it's James M. Cody Law Corp. 
uh, Patricia Taylor Law. I'm less clear why Big Kahuna Sports or the Innovation Resource Center got identified as individuals, but but that's what ended up happening. But overall, you know, a pretty good uh, success rate, if I can just find the percentages here, uh, for a classification model on relatively little uh, training data. Um, in my playing around with this, um, the more training data that you give ChatGPT, not surprisingly, the better job it does uh, of identifying things. And obviously it depends on the, the subject matter itself, how easy or difficult it is to sort of classify things into different categories. But overall, you know, I think pretty impressive that you know, without knowing anything about machine learning, not even in my sort of hypothetical example here, knowing what machine learning is, <laughs> I can um, ask ChatGPT uh, to match some data for me and it starts uh, using some of these more advanced models. Uh, and then as always, one of the neat things about Notable is that um, it puts all of that code into a um, Jupyter Notebook. And so, you know, you may not be super familiar with it, but if you have someone on your team that's more of a coder, they can actually look at, you know, the libraries that were used, you know, the specific code that was used to do some of those uh, classifications. Uh, of course, also because ChatGPT knows more um, than just your data, you could ask it something like, you know, can you please explain to me what the random forest model is and how it works? Okay, so it talks about how it's a, a machine learning model known as an ensemble model. It combines the predictions of several base estimators built with a given learning algorithm in order to improve generalizability and robustness. Here's a high level overview of how a random forest model works. Um, take several bootstrap samples, tree builds a tree, um, then aggregates the data. And again, this is still pretty, pretty advanced. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit lost, um, but you could then sort of say, can you explain bootstrap sampling to me a little bit more, uh, things like that. So it's one of the nice things about ChatGPT that um, it can sort of use a tool and then it can actually explain to you um, how that tool uh, works. Uh, so hopefully this was helpful. Again, if you are wanting to know a little bit more about how the basics of this work, I'd recommend you look at my first video on uh, how you can do data analysis using Notable and ChatGPT. You need the paid version of ChatGPT Plus and they need to install uh, a Notable plugin. And um, yeah, if you uh, like this video, um, stay tuned. I'll make some more as I go along and I find things about ChatGPT and, and Notable that uh, I find interesting and helpful. Okay, thanks a lot.